Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Genom's Take 5 webinar on sales and marketing. My name is Stephanie Robert, and we're delighted to have you join us today. Before we begin, let me remind you of just a few housekeeping items. All attendees will be on mute. You'll have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenters by simply typing your questions into the Q&A panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation, presentation and they will be addressed during the Q&A. This webinar is being recorded and you can access the recording within 72 hours at argenum.org backslash webinars. The PowerPoint slides for this event are also available for download in the chat. If you hover your mouse over the file and click to download, then hover over the file again and click to open, uh, you'll be able to access the, the slides. Um, the file will be uploaded several times to the chat for latecomers, so you may see the file appear in the chat more than once. Our moderator today is Catherine Madison, Director of Sales here at Argentum. Catherine will briefly introduce the panelists from Conversion Logics and the Joint Commission when they begin their discussion. Take it away, Catherine. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, today's presenters will showcase actionable solutions to current industry challenges. Each speaker will have 15 minutes to present. At the conclusion of the presentations, there will be a Q&A and we will wrap up with five key takeaways from today's presentations. Our first speakers today are Jen Lovely from Conversion Logics and Eric Irwin from Westmont Living. Jen Lovely is Executive Vice President and Partner at Conversion Logics. She specializes in delivering qualified traffic to clients' websites to accelerate their leads, tours, and move-ins. Before joining the company, she spent 20 years in the hospitality sector as an executive in sales and marketing. Eric Irwin began his healthcare career in 2006, and he currently manages 14 community relations directors and 10 communities with Westmont Living. Eric has also previously worked with Comfort Keepers, an in-home care agency. Jen has worked closely with Eric as a marketing advisor for Westmont. In today's session, Jen and Eric will share different challenges Westmont faced and how they work together to overcome them. Jen, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks, Catherine, and thanks for having us today. I'm really excited to be here with all of you and to uh, for Eric and I to be able to share some experiences. We've really been able to have some, some fun experiences and to be able to overcome objections and, and whatnot together. So thanks for having us. And we're just excited to see each other again because we barely ever get to see each other. So, <laughs> well, in person or on video, we get to talk on the phone a lot, but hi, Jen. <laughs> Hey, Eric, good to see you. I'll, and I'll, I'll get to see you in a month. So actually three weeks. Yeah. And I wanted to tell a little bit about conversion logics. I know Catherine uh, let everyone know what we do, but we're a full service marketing technology company. And really our mission is to enable marketers, managers, business owners, asset managers, uh, you know, to profitably generate leads, tours, and leases, and then also to be able to see attribution and are things working. Uh, and that's one of the things that Eric and I are going to talk about today. The first scenario we want to talk about is we had a low lead to move in conversion rate. Um, Eric and I had sat down together come up with a budget. We knew where we wanted to be. Uh, we had a great, robust uh, digital marketing plan. Uh, we were targeting the right leads, et cetera. And what was happening is the leads were coming in and, um, and this does happen. Um, they were coming in and a lot of the uh, directors of sales and marketing, marketing managers, CRDs on property, a lot of times they'll see a lead come in and they think, eh, just another, another lead that's unqualified. Uh, it's probably an ILS, third party lead, that sort of thing. And so really what was happening is the leads were not being looked at like they should. So what we did is Eric and I trained their sales team and we explained to them from, from top to bottom, we said, this is what we're doing. We're, we've got these marketing, marketing plans, digital marketing plans running. Here's who we are targeting. Here's the leads that are coming in. And then we also went back and looked 
at our least journey visualizer and we coached them and showed them how to see where these people were in their journey or where they were in the process um, and said, hey, look, you can see that, that Catherine has been to the website four times before and now she's finally taking advantage of a promotion or maybe she's RCPing for an event. So in doing that, what we saw is they weren't dismissing or closing them out early and they had a better understanding that, hey, these were important leads and, yeah. and they were qualified. So- and and two, you know, we were able to do lead reviews. So Jen gave us a lot of information, like she said, like, hey, they've been to your website four times and, and, or they're doing this. And so they're, they're searching, they're looking, they're testing, they're just, you know, putting, tipping their foot in the water. And so a lot of them don't even know anything about senior living. They're just testing the waters. And, and what Conversion Logs was able to do with us is kind of give us that extra information so we could not just touch leads for the sake of touching leads, but really target the leads that we wanted to get to quickly. And then the other ones that were just kind of looky lose, we could still get to them and we still need to nurture those leads um, and make sure that we're, you know, uh, you know, staying in touch with them maybe every two months, every three months instead of every week. Um, but it was, it was really great to, to sit down with Jen and her show us how we could do that. Um, and so that's one of the ways that, that she helped us in, in that regard. Yeah. And things like, like Eric said, some of those people, they weren't even ready to move forward, but they knew they had a need. And so we would do things like, you know, plug them into email marketing campaigns, send them an email every so often, just keep in touch with some tips. Yeah, so we don't, we don't know when leads are going to move in, but we want to be there when they're ready. And so if they've talked to us in the past, it may be, you know, as a CRD, I remember I worked at a community for 13 years. And I remember uh, having leads that came into an event 10 years prior that now we're ready to make that transition. And we still had them in the database. They still got our direct mailers or they got our, you know, uh, mass emails or, you know, just little things just kept touching them, kept touching them. And then all of a sudden, um, 10 years later, they came in. So you never know. Um, and, and you want to be there when they're ready. And so that's what Jen was able to help us do on, on those little email marketing campaigns and different things that we were able to do. That's a good point, Eric. You know, be there when they're ready. I think that's that's something that all of us need to remember. So um, we, we had another scenario that Eric and I ran into. Um, we had a great property in the Bay Area, right? And we thought everybody who's IL, independent living market, they're going to want to move in here. We thought we were doing everything right. We were targeting the right people and that sort of thing. Everything from, you know, having big luau events to, you know, all these large events and, and whatnot. And what was happening is it was independent living, assisted living and memory care. And we were getting a lot of memory care folks moving in as well as some uh, assisted living, mm -hmm. but we, we weren't seeing the independent living market moving in. Um, and what was happening is after year one, some of those people in memory care were obviously, you know, turning over due to attrition, right? And um, and so we really hunkered down and said, how do we get more of those independent living prospects in the door? And we started talking to a few people that had connected with Eric or that had converted and really um, interviewed them and said, like, what are you interested in? What are people in this market interested in? And first of all, what we knew is in this market, there was there was this group of people, a pretty large group of people yeah. that literally they are born and die in the same house and they're not leaving that house. And yeah. so we knew we had to really um, push the right button to get them in the door. And then we also talked about the fact, Eric and I talked about the fact that, you know, a lot of us think that everybody wants to come to these large events, but 80% of people are introverts in some form or fashion. Which so is definitely after, not Jen. That's definitely not Jen. Not so, uh, more than you know, more than you know. <laughs> um, so, but what we, when we talked to these folks, him and his team, we found out that they didn't want to come to big events and what we were promoting wasn't interesting to them. We're like, okay, so what are you interested in? So we started promoting smaller events, more intimate um, situations like, you know, a small wine tasting or, uh, or wine pairing event, you know, in eight people maximum or a Bible study, you know, we found out people might be interested in Bible study or a book club, or there wasn't there something Eric flower, 
um, some sort yeah, of flower did, arranging. Yeah, we did flower arranging. Um, we did. Uh, we also uh, reached out to all the support groups in the area and found that there was, you know, a lot, especially during the pandemic, a lot of them lost their space um, to have their support groups. So they were doing, doing them via Zoom. But now that things had opened up, um, they were able to come in. And, and what we also found is that people were ready to get back out there. And even though we are in the Bay Area, uh, this community is probably the most, um, you know, strict uh, as far as COVID went, um, you know, people were, were just really wanting to get out and see people. And so, but they didn't want to do it in a big, huge event. And so that's where we start looking to do like lead generating events that were a little bit smaller and just thinking outside the box um, where we could touch base with four or five people at a time instead of having 60 and not having that intimate talk about what senior living is we had five and and it and it the the conversations came up organically which is how you always want especially in a culture um in the bay area and where we're situated um a lot of the a lot of the residents are engineers and they're you know they're just kind of geared towards being more introverted um and also uh they you know most of them uh they're from a culture that they take care of their own parents from you know so they stay, they stay in the same home, they take care of their parents. And it, that shift is starting to happen where they can say, wow, you know, I'm taking care of mom, I'm taking care of the kids, I have a husband taking care of the grandkids, and I just don't have enough time. Mm -hmm. And so they're starting to understand um, that we're here for, for them. It's not so much for their parent, it's, so, it's more for them. And we weren't able to do that unless we did these smaller events and, and kind of hone in on that and figure that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what we did is with our conversion cloud um, software with our modules, Eric and I were able to say, okay, let's let's push five different types of events and see which one which one sticks. Mm -hmm. And what we found is the smaller events in general were sticking. And so for the categories that you know that maybe weren't sticking so much, we would we would literally just turn those off and then we would say, okay, let's monopolize on those that are working. And what we saw is we were getting qualified leads, we were getting people in the door who were actually interested in what we were offering, and we were really catering to the demographic. So I think that's really important to not assume that everybody wants the same thing um, and is interested in the same thing and to really to really know your market. And it was it was kind of a learning lesson for all of us um, and and one that we we definitely won't forget. So yeah. um, and then there's another situation that Eric and I would like to talk about too. So we have we have a campus um and uh we call it a campus because it truly is uh there's single family homes great you know one level homes and then you have your independent living apartments you have your assisted living apartments and your memory care apartments um and the owner um you know was talking to me and eric and said hey what do you think about separating these two sites we really need to you know get more people moving into the homes and we sat down and strategized a lot about this and said, you know, in the end, that's probably not a good idea. And also we even, we brought the website company in too. And I really want to let everybody know it's really important for all the vendors to work together. So Westmont, me and my team, website company, we, we all got together and said, hey, look, um, this is actually going to be a deterrent if we split the sites because with a campus that you know, that future resident or that prospect can see themselves moving through um, from 62 all the way to 90 on the same campus and continuing with their social circle that entire time too. And then for the adult children, we this was attractive to them because they could see that, gosh, I move mom in and literally I can, I only have to move her a half a mile to go from that house into independent living. Mm -hmm. So in the end, we all decided that it would probably be best to to keep everything on the same site. Um, number one, just for that main purpose, so that everybody could see how they can, you know, go through that progression um, and stay with the same campus, the same um, friends, the same residents, and that sort of thing. But also, we we really discovered that if we break the two sites up with independent living apartments and single, you know, single family homes, or with those with those one level homes for sixty two plus we really were going to be competing against each other, which would drive cost up. So 
Um, so not only was it important because we could uh, promote the whole campus feel and progressing from one stage to another, but saving money. Also something that we talked a lot about is Google business profile. And there's so many people that are actually converting through business Google business profile because they're on their phones or their iPads or on mobile devices. And we said it will also be um, a mistake because they're the same address. So we can't have two Google business profiles. So that was one of the things we talked a lot about as well. And then with the website company, after Eric and I were strategizing, we said, hey, let's, let's add a paragraph right there on that front page. A, it's going to be attractive to the adult children and B, it's going to be attractive to the future residents themselves and talking about the fact that we can progress not only in your social circle, circle but just through life and in your different needs um, from independent living all the way through memory care here at the same campus. Um, so yeah, really important just to you know, yeah, it was, we were we were missing the point that they could progress through. You know, they could stay in the same place mm -hmm. no matter what their care needs were. And so, um, this is a, a massive um, community and um, has a lot of units in it, but it has a lot of things that can offer someone if they just want to move in at 55. They can really stay there through all the processes of aging, and uh, and, and make their life consistent. And the, those residents that were just, I don't want to do the yard anymore. I just want to have a couple meals made for myself. And I want to go travel and make sure that I don't have to have someone come house sit for me. Those types of, of uh, residents were starting to, to come in. And then once once you have them there, they generally will progress through all the stages of, of care that's needed. And But we couldn't do that unless we were able to to market the way that Jen had, had suggested to us. And something else Eric and I talked a lot about too was the fact that people who were in the one level homes, the 62 plus residents, you know, they, we promoted, Hey, you can, you can volunteer, you know, or if, if you have a talent, if you play guitar or if you sing or whatever, they can go meet the residents. And then they could kind of see, you know, how life is over at the, you know, AL building and that sort of thing. So um, it was nice. And then those residents could also see that those folks also lived on campus. They didn't come from 30 miles away. So lots of good reasons to kind of keep everything together on one website um, and promote yourself as a whole entity. So yep. that was really important. Catherine, I think we are ready for the next slide. So key takeaway number one, um, it's really important to find a marketing partner who knows your business and really understands your vision and can help you execute it with agility. I can't tell you how important pivoting is. Um, and, and that's a word we've been using a lot the last two and a half years, right? Um, like for example, with Eric and I, with the, with the building that was having trouble with getting the independent living residents, we were literally, he and I were pivoting weekly. Okay, that's not working. Okay, let's change. That's not working, let's change. Oh, that is working. Okay, let's build on that. So. Yeah. Um, Anyway, Eric, anything else you want to say regarding well, regarding? This? Yeah, it's, it's it's important to have a partner that knows your your business inside and out. And every company has their intricacies and their culture that are a little bit different. But at the end of the day, we all have the one thing that we're trying to do, and that's to love and care for seniors. Mm -hmm. And so, finding those methods and ways um, that we can share that culture with people who don't know anything about it, and you know, just working with anyone who does you know, uh, you know, engine, search engine optimization, all those things, they don't know those intricacies of our industry. Um, and so it's just nice working with a partner that <laughs> Jen works a lot at night. I get a lot of emails from her like eight or nine o'clock at night. And so I usually, I'll, if I'm on the road or something, I'll pick up the phone and we're pivoting. In fact, one, one time I was on the road, we talked for an hour and, and came up with the strategy, um, more her than me, but, um, of doing the smaller events because she had, talked to someone in the, in the industry and had done, you know, had already read an article or something about it. And it was just something that we're like, well, you know, let's, because we're trying different things all the time and we're not afraid to fail. Um, you know, that's, that's how we're doing it. And, and, you know, finding a marketing partner that, that um, can, can mitigate your risk, but it's not, not afraid to fail with you. And so, um, hey, that didn't work. All right, let's move on, you know, and what's next? Because we know we're not going to be able to succeed unless we we take a, a couple of lumps, um, you know, and, and so that's just what we have to do. 
Yeah. And literally like we talk, you know, it seems like such a cliche, like be an extension of your sales team or be an extension of your marketing team, but it's true. You know, not only do they need to just, you know, push the button and start your digital marketing, but they really need to understand your industry and, and your company and what you're trying to do, what your end goal is. Yep. And then let's talk about like key takeaway number two. So you know, this is in regards to the independent living situation where we were just not getting any independent living residents coming in the door. So it's so important to know your geography, know your audience, know your demographic. It is not the same everywhere. I mean, if you're sitting right next to an area, like, you know, if you know you've got a lot of Stanford graduates, you know, in your backyard, let's figure out how to, how to go after those folks. Right. Um, Because, you know, a lot of times too, a lot of those folks belong to the same groups. And if one of them moves in or, or, you know, gets wind that, Hey, there's this really cool thing over here, you know, the rest might hop on board too. So again, every, every geo area isn't the same. Every audience isn't the same. So it's really important. And I would say, as you are acquiring a building, as you're um, starting from the ground up, figure out what that audience looks like beforehand. Um, Talk to people in the area, super important. And key takeaway number three, um, attribution is huge. I think that's probably one of the biggest obstacles with owners um, and asset managers right now um, is that they they don't know how to look at attribution and is this working or not? So it's really important to be able to see the customer journey happening and where people are in the decision-making process, in the sales process. And and the most important part about that is so that Eric and his team can say, see that, um, you know, this person's already been to the website four times. I don't need to start from scratch. I need to meet them where they're at. Um, It's really frustrating. Eric and I were kind of talking about this you know, you, you get on the phone with, you know, with your internet provider and they start from square one. You're like, Nope, already been there. Can we just, (laughs) Oh, I I just want to, you know, come up with a new plan. Can we just start from there instead of getting my first name and last name and my, you know, social security and my phone number and everything. So, um, you know, I think it is frustrating to folks when, when people start from square one and try to try to sell them again. And, they're like, I already know your property. I've already been there. I went for a tour. Now we're ready. Can we just start from here? So you're not starting from square one and you're meeting those future residents where they're at. Um, and then also we're able to see what's working. Um, if we're seeing that Facebook ads are converting, social ads are converting, or we're seeing that display ads are converting, then by all means, let's increase that spend, right? If something isn't working, let's remove it from the campaign. So Eric, anything else you want to add to that? No, I mean, I think you hit on on all of those. Um, I, I don't really have very much to add to, to that. <laughs> no problem. So any questions? Catherine, have we had any questions that have come, come in? We'll do. We're, we're keeping them in the Q&A, and then we'll go through everything at the, at the end of everyone's presentations, if that's okay with you, Jen. Uh, that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. So, and thank you, Jen and Eric, that was some wonderful information. And I I feel like you've given the group um, some some ideas that they can put into action right away. Uh, So thank you so much for sharing that. We really appreciate it. Um, Our next presenter today, Geronimo. Um, She is, Manette is the Associate Director of Assisted Living and Nursing Care Center Services at the Joint Commission. Manette assists and guides organizations as they evaluate and move forward toward achieving Joint Commission Assisted Living Community accreditation. She advises senior living leadership on how their organization can leverage Joint Commission accreditation and other Joint Commission enterprise solutions to achieve business objectives and create value for their organizations. I will turn it over to you, Manette. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone, depending on where you're you're, um, dialing in from. Uh, Thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Manette Geronimo. I'm the Associate Director for the Nursing Care Center and Assisted Living Community Accreditation Programs of the Joint Commission. Uh, The Joint Commission is a non-for-profit organization whose mission is to drive quality improvement and safety in healthcare um, using the various accreditation programs, certification, and 
services that we offer across the continuum. And last year, we launched uh, an accreditation program specifically designed for assisted living and memory care communities. And my goal today is really to focus on presenting solutions and how you might distinguish your, the quality of care and safety within your organization and market it using your achievement of accreditation. So I'll discuss this using the three M's of marketing as a framework, the market, message, and medium, and also illustrate ideas on how you might apply the three M's um, with your achievement of accreditation. And some of the, the key marketing message you're actually able to carry when you, your organization um, receives this distinction. Next slide, please. So um, in planning for your marketing message or campaign, it's important to think of, of these three M's sequentially, beginning with your first M, the market. And this is really looking at who is your target audience. Our previous presenter had spoken about the importance of this. And it's not really just looking at uh, the demographics, but also the psychographic um, characteristics of your target audience. What are their activities, their preferences, their lifestyles? Where might you find them? And then also look into defining which ones you want to include or exclude in your target audience. Are you just wanting to focus on the prospective AL residents, or are you wanting to expand it to include their family or caregivers? Because that will inform your message, or both. You can include all of them. Um, and also think about whether you want to have your target audience be broader or targeted. There are messages that are more, uh, uh, I guess, applicable or effective on a broader audience. Like, for example, we've opened, come to our facilities. That's really a message you want to carry broadly. But then there are also messages like, for example, if you want to highlight a specific uh, specialty service like memory care, that might be more, more attuned to a specific target audience. So in looking, next slide, please. So in looking at our, our targeted audience in our segment, the prospective AL resident, um, we just want to be thinking about how it's also changed throughout the years. You know, the AL resident of today is so very different from 10, 15 years ago. Um, recent research by the University of Chicago had said that ALC resident, on the average, is really managing around 14 chronic conditions. So be thinking about that. And that means that they're coming to you with higher level care needs. Um, which might include also memory care impacting conditions. And, you know, with the past two years experience of COVID, however that might look for them, that also certainly will change their perceptions of your communities and might think about certain elements that will end up being more important for them, perhaps more important than building amenities or features. So, um, their concerns might be, how can I stay well within these four walls of my new home while engaging in socialization that will keep me inspired and, you know, have meaning and purpose in my life. So, so that's also one thing that we notice in this space that there's now a change or shift from it being just an either social or medical model to both and because just because wellness is now a more whole person holistic view uh, for an individual. So next slide, please. So I talked about also thinking about whether you want to expand your message to include the caregiver. And this would be your mom, dad, uncle, or family members that are caring for others. And we saw in recent research that um, this group will be comprised of educated individuals. Many have college experience. 61% or majority for percent are working. And so it's not surprising that they're having difficulty coordinating care for their loved ones. And we're also seeing a steadily growing number of those of them that care for those with memory impacting conditions. Many are coming from the boomers and Gen Xers, me included, but uh, surprisingly, there's also those that are coming from that millennial group. So that certainly will change also how we might want to address uh, or uh, convey our message to this audience. Next slide, please. So with, here in the Joint Commission, when we started looking at this prior to the launch of our program, we had found that um, for caregivers, family caregivers, they care deeply about the quality of care provided 
and safety measures present in communities. They will they look to staff that is responsive, adequately trained, and um, considerate in their provision of care, and that the community has a means of addressing emergent situations. Those are some of the things that have been revealed as markers of quality uh, important to a family caregiver. Next slide, please. We also found that um, once caregivers or families and residents are aware of what accreditation is, this forms part of their consideration in selecting a community for their loved ones and would be more willing to tour a facility that's accredited, even if it's outside of their radius of original consideration. So all this information that I've shared with you is just really underscoring how important it is to, staying, because, to stay attuned to the different preferences and values and um, characteristics of our target audience, because it could be changing over time. Next slide, please. So we let's move on to the second M, which is the message. And this is really looking at what is it that you want to convey to your target audience. And when you're thinking about your marketing message, you will want to marry the needs and wants of your customer to your unique value proposition. And the key word there is unique. What really makes you stand out from the rest because um, that is what would make your message powerful along with the emotions evoked by your marketing message and brand. So when maybe you wanna have a focus group or do a survey, what does your brand elicit as far as emotions or associations that your target customers would make to your brand? Um, do you evoke sense of security, peace of mind, quality, fun, or um, maybe, and when you're thinking and crafting this message, you wanna uh, include visual cues or think about the tone of your copy and the message itself. So for example, you can just have two statements saying our gold seal, your presence, your peace of mind. So with the, those two statements, you're conveying already something that distinguishes you, something also that evokes emotions for your target audience. So our gold seal, your peace of mind. So the more you could highlight how your unique attributes are um, meeting the unique needs and wants of your customer, the more effective and memorable your message is, especially when there's emotions attached to it as well. Next slide, please. And so I, I propose that these elements, when you highlight, um, you, that you're actually meeting these elements when you're highlighting your community's achievement of Joint Commission accreditation, because uh, when you achieve accreditation, it means that your community has reviewed and met higher quality and safety standards in these key areas of your operations. So you have your human resources, emergency management, provision of care, all of which had uh, been shown as important to your um, target audience. Next slide, please. And accreditation also involves a once every three year on-site visit. And so that allows us to assess your capabilities and interactions that you're having within or your organization to ensure collaborative care in a safe, functional, and respectful environment. And of course, when you achieve that, that certainly those certainly are organizational strengths that you could highlight in your message um, when marketing your communities. Next. So just to sum up, some of the key insights and messages that you're able to carry as an accredited organization or provider, one is accreditation is voluntarily going above and beyond in quality and safety. And the key word there is voluntarily. You did not, you were not required, and yet you selected and chosen to commit to seek this validation of the quality and safety of services that you're providing within your community. Second, um, and something that you might want to think about when thinking about recruitment messaging is that accreditation safety standards are designed to protect both staff, both resident and the staff. So when we were crafting our standards for this program, we are also not also including how might we make sure that the processes you're including in your care will um, protect the safety of your staff. All right. And then Another message, uh, especially uh, when we launch our memory care certification is that accreditation with specific certification 
will allow you to have a distinction that's unique to your services and to your community. Um, we actually launched a memory care certification in our nursing care center program this year, but that we'll, we will soon expand to assisted living. And this is in collaboration with Alzheimer's Association. And so when you are able to achieve both accreditation and certification for your memory care, it also will uh, show in your message that you are partnering with nationally recognized and leading brands in quality, safety, and memory care that will set your organization apart from the rest. Right? And of course, with the gold seal, which I will show you later, uh, it will also symbolize you know, and illustrate and demonstrate to your, to your audience that um, you have gone above and beyond to deliver continuously improving care for your residents. And that is how you might use that emblem um, as a marketing tool. Now let's move on to the third M, which is the medium. And here um, you will want to think about your, your, the, the way you may want to reach your target audience. What are the different channels available to you? Of course, there are traditional means of doing this, the print ad, radio, billboard, and some of you might already be doing that, but let's not discount the non-traditional ways that you can carry your message and our earlier um, presenters have illustrated some examples of this having hosting events having um, involving yourselves in activities or associations or word of mouth marketing in fact you can think about your team members as brand ambassadors um, later i'll show you some pins that they could wear and saying that we are accredited and that in itself could be a conversation starter um, that will have your um, team members speak to, you know, the value of your community having achieved accreditation when a visitor or a resident asks about it. What does that mean that you're accredited? So why are you wearing it proudly? And if you are able to coach your staff in speaking to the value of that, then your staff does become a, a, a marketing uh, ambassador for you as well, brand ambassador, and a powerful one at that too. Next, please. So here I'll just uh, share with you in this portion some of the marketing tools that we make available to our accredited orgs to support them in carrying this message around having distinguished themselves for quality and safety that they could use um, in their marketing materials. So uh, when an accredited organization, uh, when an organization or provider achieves accreditation, we give them uh, an access to a publicity kit, which will include press release templates, uh, how they can get those pins and stickers, the gold seal that they can use in stationaries, websites, and business cards. Um, they also are able to get listed in uh, public facing websites like our quality check at the Joint Commission or the Community Resource Finder for Alzheimer's Association. Um, there are banners that some customers have used and also um, co-production of uh, publication or customer spotlights between us and our accredited customers. There's also vlog, blog, social media um, tools that our customers have used to market themselves uh, with their achievement of accreditation. But you know, sometimes I think uh, also do not discount, you know, maybe your church bulletin could be as effective as a social media, just depending on your um, target audience, right? So let me just go through some of these examples of how our customers have used um, accreditation to distinguish themselves and market themselves. Here you'll see Clement Manor, our accredited assisted living in Wisconsin, um, listed in our quality check. Next slide, please. And the quality check is really a public facing website when um, the public would want to search for accredited providers or organization in their area. Then here are, I'm sorry, can we go back? Uh, yeah, thank you. So here's to the left, some examples of the, the gold seal, the emblem that you're able to display when you achieve accreditation. Some of the stickers that I mentioned or the we are accredited bins that I mentioned earlier when, that your staff could wear. In the middle, you'll see the press release template. Those highlighted, you just plug in your information upon achieving accreditation and it's gonna be media ready. And then to the right, you'll see uh, some a brochure that you can use in your admission packets. It says, we achieved the gold seal of approval from the Joint Commission, what does this all mean? So then it can become part of the conversation as you're touring your residents in your community 
or having this form part of the marketing message for your marketers to carry. Next is uh, just an example of how this co-branded logo on the market, uh, memory care certification would look. This is how it looks for a nursing care center program. As I shared earlier, this will soon expand to assisted living. And so you're able to display both uh, brands uh, when you're upon achievement of accreditation and certification. And here in the middle, you'll see uh, also other examples of how our customers have promoted their accreditation. In the middle is a co-produced material between us and them to spotlight them for having achieved uh, assisted living accreditation and first in the nation. This is help, self-help home in Illinois. To the left of that, you'll see um, a social media <laughs> announcement or celebration of Lennox on the Lakes in Florida who had achieved assisted living accreditation, the first in the state as well. They're part of a multi-site um, organization. Underneath it, you'll see one that has displayed their achievement in Facebook. To the right of that, you'll see banners that will show the gold emblem, just showing that they've also achieved accreditation. And the bottom is an example of our accredited org. Um, they're actually almost like a CCRC, and we actually accredit all of their services, including assisted living, and you'll see that the gold emblem is in their website. Here are other examples of how our customers have used um, or leveraged social media uh, using YouTube videos as, as vlog. Um, Bright Star Care had shown there how they, why they, they have a vlog about how they had to let, why it's important for them that they are, uh, that they try to achieve accreditation. And then there's two other examples here of websites, um, one from a provider organization that dedicated a page on the value of them being accredited. And this is form, form part of educating also your target audience about what's unique to you. And then the third, um, on the bottom there is also uh, another organization, provider organization highlighting their achievement of accreditation and why that is important to their prospective uh, residents and, and patients. So hopefully by, by showing you all of this and sharing you all of this information, you've been able to kind of think uh, about, you know, how might you wanna craft your marketing by considering the three Ms, your market, your message and you're the medium to carry your message across. And then secondly, that um, when crafting and designing your marketing campaigns, that you are really looking at matching what's unique to you and what is the need and wants of your customer. Um, the tighter that becomes and the more emotion you can bring along with it, the more powerful it is. And then the third, is hopefully through the examples I've shared and a little bit about our program, the features of it that I've shared, you've seen how you can actually leverage accreditation and certification as a powerful marketing tool to attract and retain residents, families, and even staff and distinguish yourselves from the competition. So thanks so much for that. And please feel free to contact me directly if you have any more questions about our program or if there's anything at all that we could assist with. Thank you. Thank you, Manette. That was some wonderful information and hope people have learned uh, the value of, of using accreditation in their marketing. Mm -hmm. So we have some time for a couple of questions here. And uh, the first question I have is gonna be for Jen Lovely with Conversion Logics. Jen, when you talked about understanding your demographics and your geography, um, uh, folks are asking, what are some of the best ways to gather that information so you know how to market appropriately to your audience? Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the key factors, obviously, you know, we're able, we're able to target, target by geography, right? If we know that people are coming to the property from within a 30 mile radius or 15 mile radius, I think that's really important to understand too, is to be in really close touch the digital marketer with the property itself as well. Um, a lot of times I think that sometimes people feel like, oh, people are going to come from 30 miles away, but realistically, are they only gonna come from 10 miles away? Are they only gonna come from 15 miles away? And then another really great way to do this is just to literally interview folks in the area. As you're talking to prospects and their families, 
ask them what they're interested in. What are their hobbies? Um, what makes them tick? So it's a collaboration of efforts. I can, I can look up here high level and I can assume that we're going to get the prospects within a 10 mile radius or 15 mile radius, which is probably pretty true, right? Depending on the area. Um, I can assume that they're going to be 55 plus um, because that's, that's what we've got to look for, right? I can assume that it's going to be a compiled effort of adult children and the possible residents themselves, depending on the levels of care. But really, I think we need to look to the property level employees the directors of sales and marketing. And I think it's really important for those marketing managers as prospects are walking in the door to, to really get some insight from them. What attracted them? What are their hobbies? What are they interested in? Was it attractive that the property was, was really close? The community was, was close and they've always lived in that area. Um, or did they come to that area because uh, the adult children lived in that area? So again, have those conversations. It's very, very important. Um, we can always pinpoint what we think is going to work best, but in addition, we need to be talking to the marketing directors of the communities and the prospects themselves. Great, thank you, Jen. That was some really helpful information. Mm -hmm. um, the next question here is for Monette. Uh, Monette, are communities interested in becoming Joint Commission accredited? How do we start and how long does the accreditation process take? Oh, thanks for that question. So um, when you're interested in achieving accreditation, really the first um, step would be to contact us because then we'd be able to kind of walk you through the, the process. Um, as far as um, how long does it typically take for an, a, a community to achieve accreditation, it will really depend on um, how they might uh, evaluate themselves against the standards. And, and that varies by community. There are those that are well-established and have had processes in place that would really meet those standards. And so their time frame for achieving accreditation will be shorter. Um, on the average, maybe within four months, they'd be ready, three to four months, they'd be ready to um, for that initial accreditation visit. Um, for others, they might find themselves as they're evaluating standards, um, they might need to tweak a little bit of uh, processes or steps to meet standards and meet quality and safe, safety standards. So that could also um, be flexible to meet those needs. But in the very process of evaluating yourselves against the standards, that in itself is transformational for the community because then your leaders and staff are identifying where are we doing well at and where are we doing, where are the gaps that we might wanna to continue to improve upon? So that in itself is transformational as you're preparing for your initial accreditation. So again, if you're interested, just feel free to contact us directly at the Joint Commission and we'll um, be more specific on the, these steps of achieving accreditation. Thank you, Manette. Mm -hmm. This next one is, is more of a comment than a question, but I, I just want to say that one of our viewers has written in how much they love the tools on the Joint Commission site. Um, use them as part of an award-winning care campaign uh, to tied to a milestone anniversary, and it really helped them to re-solidify their reputation. So, oh, that's, that's, that's great to hear. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for sharing that, Catherine. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. And then it looks like we have one final question here. And Jen, I believe this one is for you as well. Um, it says, what are some of the best ways to market our aging life care management services to folks who are already dealing with living on a fixed income? And it's this is coming from a for fee service perspective. Right. Right. So some of the best ways to market this are through display advertising, through social advertising, through PMT geographic. Uh, geo demo cycle behavioral things like that. We can actually target specific addresses uh, through precision mobile targeting, um, and then also with with our conversion cloud modules um, and our software, there is uh, one piece of uh, information that you can use. It's one of our modules, and it is an income qualifier. So if you can have some sort of income qualifier too, to ask specific questions to make sure that these folks qualify that can be helpful in the process. And like I was mentioning before, you, you want to meet people where they're at and, and try to get through some of those questions ahead of time. So again, there's, there's lots of different strategies we can use. Um, 
pretty much everything that that there is to do there's different qualifiers and, and different income levels and things like that that you can actually put into play but then also having some sort of a conversion tool that helps to determine whether people qualify or not is is really important and if someone's specifically interested i would absolutely love to have a sidebar conversation and actually demo something similar to that Thank you, Jen. I really appreciate it. Um, Jen, Eric, Manad, thank you all so much. Really appreciate uh, the insights that you've provided today. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that our audience got some, some great answers to their questions and that they will take the time to follow up with each of you for anything else that they need after today. And well, Catherine, really quick yeah. question. Um, yeah. Will you be able to offer up all of our information too in case anyone has any questions afterwards? Absolutely, absolutely. We can put that into the chat and then it will also be included in the uh, the download. So the takeaways from today, all of the slides are available in the chat now. If anybody wants to download that and that includes contact information for all of our presenters. Perfect, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right, so as we wrap up, I just wanna remind everybody of our takeaways from today. Uh, number one, it's find a marketing partner who knows your business, understands your vision, and can help you execute it with agility. Uh, number two is to know your geography, know your audience, and know your demographic. Number three is attribution and customer journey mapping. Hold the clues to identify what is and isn't working. Campaigns can then be adjusted as needed, and the sales team can see where the prospect is in their journey and meet them there. You aren't starting from square one. Uh, and number four, think about your three M's, market, message, medium, when crafting your community sales and marketing campaigns. Number five is market your unique attributes that set you apart from your competitors and meet the demand of your consumers. And our bonus takeaway today is that accreditation and certification can be leveraged as a powerful marketing tool to attract and retain residents, families, and staff and distinguish yourself from the competition. And I will turn it over to Stephanie. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you, Jen, Eric, Manette, and Catherine for today's wonderful discussion. Um, for uh, everybody out there, um, if we weren't able to answer your questions today, please feel free to reach out to Jen, Eric, or Man Monette directly. Um, their confirmation or their contact information is on the screen. Um, you'll be able to um, review it too in the recording. Um, also, the PowerPoint slides for this event are available for download in the chat. Simply hover your mouse over the file and click to download, then hover over the file again and click to open. Um, this will help you access the slides. Um, this concludes today's webinar. Please join us tomorrow for our next Senior Living Insights webinar on active shooter and workplace violence. And again, on December 7th for our Senior Living Insights webinar on fostering healthy relationships throughout your community. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Monette. Thanks, everyone. Bye.